Ha! Reset. Hey everybody, this is Anne. Welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips, where we are here with me, your host, and disembodied brain, Justin. How's everybody this morning? Not much chat. Not much chat. Everybody must be busy in the morning. Either that or we just haven't had enough people, like, pile in yet. I pretty much saw a couple of you, ch like, chat and then just flipped the switch, so. Because I'm already a little late starting. How is it? How is it going? It's Thursday. The day before Friday, which makes, I think Thursday is probably the most underrated day of the week. It's just like, you know, everybody's just waiting for Friday. Like, they're just like, Thursday, just just get gone so it can be Friday. <laughs> ah, morning, morning, morning. Listening while you work on schoolwork at work, Sodi. Yay. T1, Thursday 1. What is T1? D. Clearman is talking in code. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, thanks, Quindy. T minus one. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, fine, Crows. Since I started doing the yoga in the morning, like about, you know, maybe it took like a week to start to like really, really work. But now it's like I can sit in the chair for probably two hours. I need to stretch. Like I still need to get up and stretch to keep my back feeling great. But, I mean, it's a little, it, like, aches from time to time. That's the most. And when you've got, like, permanent damage and you've got it down to just aching every once in a while, like, that's huge, right? So, yeah, I do a combo of just easy yoga and uh, some, a little bit, I worked in a few crunches and stuff. Um, but everything else is just, like, yoga. Just basic yoga. Like, super easy yoga. I worked some planks in, too. Those are harder. Yeah. Oh, individual paints doing too. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the problem, right, Crows? We've got, we've all got weak core muscles, and so our backs, like, end up supporting a lot of our, like, our bad habits, our bad slouchy habits, right? So at one point, you know, six weeks ago, I just got really sick of it and went, screw this, I'm gonna just get my core stronger if that's what it takes. And sure enough, fixed it right away. Should have done it years ago. If I had known years ago that 15 minutes every morning could fix my back, like, no brainer, right? But yeah, especially when you're a mini painter who paints a lot, like me, or has to do the streams, which are, you know, an hour and a half or more, then uh, it time in the chair is just like, you know, it, it can be very hurty unless you uh, shore yourself up. So I don't know, guys. I was thinking about the dark skin. I'm not going to make her a drow. I'm not going to do dark skin and silver hair. Um, and blonde is right out because uh, she's going to have a yellow dress. But I am thinking about dark skin because just so you know, dark skin is one of the colors that looks best with um, bright, vibrant colors like yellow and orange. So, hey Trouble, how's it going? Yo Val, Valandar. I mean, Lizette made me fall in love. It's, I mean, this is just a re-sculpt of the original Werner. So, I mean, the original Lizette in Warlord was one of probably one of the models that made a lot of people fall in love with Reaper back in the day, right, Valandar? So, I mean, this is a great re-sculpt, but it's it's very, very close. Bobby managed to get it, nail it very, very close to the original Werner. Um, Redhead uh, with dark skin then runs into the problem of looking like a fire giant. That's why I was kind of going over in my head. I mean, we can maybe do green and make her go very woodsy. I don't know. I don't know. I thought about just black. Um... Or I thought about just doing a normal, like, average Caucasian skin tone. Um, so, I don't know. I've been doing a lot of dark skin lately, so I feel like um, that would not be a fantastic choice. But, yeah, we could try to do a, wood, a very woodsy elf. A very, very woodsy elf. All right. Sure, let's do it. Let's go. As they say in the gaming... Although I think it's more like, let's go, but you know. Alrighty, Lizette. Well then, dark skin. But what dark skin, we ask, will look best? Probably a very woodsy dark skin, right? Danger Man, clip that. <laughs> clip the let's go. I could do it louder. <laughs> Remember, I used to work for Games Workshop where we had to walk out into the, the halls and wog, um, you know, during the day. 
Um, I don't think I want to do golden skin. If we're going to go, I mean, the whole point of the green hair Pendrake was that I was looking for something to go with a dark skin tone. Um, because, you know, more, more elves of color, really. So I think I want, maybe I want to go with golden skin or ruddy flesh, but different. I'm debating. Because then you're like taking a skin tone and tweaking it. So let's take a look. Where is my ruddy flesh? It's hiding somewhere in here. There it is, hiding in the skin tones where it should be. No, 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 muses. I'm I'm kind of stuck on the green hair now. Um, she's gonna be a wood elf. So there we go. We've just decided it. No, I I've, I've never painted. Despite my fascination with purple, I have never painted something with purple hair. I I really feel like uh, for me, it belongs in science fiction or or modern, and I paint very little of that genre. So I just I tend to not do it. Um, unless there, there would have to be a real, like a really good reason for me to, to go that way. Like the concept of the character would have to be that. Um, so very rare. Yeah, we're going yellow. I have not changed my mind on anything that we have decided. We originally said a yellow dress with freehand flowers, and now I'm just figuring out the rest of it. Well, yeah, but World of Warcraft, that's why it works, right, Muses? Like, if she was a WoW elf, then we'd have, you know, then we'd be Night Elf. We'd go that way, or we'd go Blood Elf. Um, but, you know, she's Lizette. So I'm just doing an alternative, alternative version of Lizette. Well, yeah, Cookie, that's why you start with one. Notice what I'm doing, by the way, guys. Notice this. What am I doing? I'm starting with the first color we chose, and then I'm working everything else from that. So we chose a yellow, probably a greenish yellow, though we'll see how that changes depending on my flower concept. Um, and from that yellow, I am like, okay, well, the color of skin that looks best with yellow is a dark tan or a brown skin. So then I shifted toward brown skin. So then I'm like, okay, brown skin, yellow dress. What hair color is going to work with the concept of this figure? You know, red, orange is going to go to fire giant and that's not her at all. You know, we could go black, but that's kind of, you know, the usual thing to do. Can't go blonde because we've got yellow. This is why, this is how you choose a color scheme. You start with your first color. Everything else works from that. You're always comparing. Every new choice is influenced by your previous choices. So the other reason to go dark skin is that yellow is light, light, dark, right? Um, no, not at all. Painting an undertone of pink for yellows, Durham? Never heard that. I, I very much prefer, depending on whether I'm going for an orangey yellow or a greenish yellow, um, I'll use an ochre variant usually. For greenish, I may go olive because it has a higher coverage. Usually with yellow, the thing that people run into is that they need something more solid for their base coat. And for a standard yellow, I mean, yellow ochre is a great choice. Um, pink hair. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, so I find, okay, so Durham, one thing to remember with people who are telling you underpainting, 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 um, undertone, unless you leave that undertone showing through somewhere, your undertone isn't going to matter with acrylic paint. It matters in oils and it matters in watercolors and it matters in acrylics if you're painting with very thin layers. But just like with Zenith lighting, inevitably you will cover that up. And unless you take steps to preserve it, it's not going to matter. That undertone color, not going to matter. For, hold on. I had to go back up and see the reason, clo Crows. Was that for coverage? But why would you choose pink? Uh, purple hair. Oh, dear. Yeah, so essentially, yes, coverage. But there are so many other colors that give coverage. Why pink? I, I just, I'm just like, eh? maybe because when you put yellow over it, it makes orange. But then why not start with an orange? I don't get it. I don't get it. But remember, acrylics are high coverage. Even more, like, more, more transparent or translucent colors, like some of the Master Series colors, are still going to cover eventually. So... If, if, if the pink is there to give you a good base coat, then I'm asking, 
why the heck aren't you starting with orange brown, which is a much better shadow for a warm yellow and gives you an orange shadow and has a great cover has great coverage or burnt orange or uh, Palomino gold. Actually, Palomino gold or mustard yellow are usually the colors I say to use because they're ochres. They cover really well. So, but yeah, so it's, it's not a big deal. Um, crows, it's just, I wanted to make that point is that when you hear somebody say that, try it, see if it works for you, right? Cause maybe it does. Maybe you like the color. Um, because like if, say you're using a clear magenta plus white to mix your pink, that can give you a really interesting orange. If you put like a lantern yellow over the top of it, it can make you, it can makes you a beautiful orange. Um, and then if you keep that in the shadows and you work up your yellows, yeah, that can give you, that can give you a very interesting color shift. But remember that over time, you'll have to act to keep that if you want it. So yeah, ochres have, ochres, well, they're not really like onions because they usually only take one layer, maybe one and a half mask. <laughs> I don't know. The pink threw me for a for threw me for a loop, and I, and I'm not saying that painter's wrong. I mean their point might just be the to put a color with white in it down underneath your orange, but or in, underneath your yellow. But but keep in mind. Okay, yeah. Well, well, it depends on how thick your paint is too, Durham. Right. Because if you are working with thick paint, it'll take many, many fewer layers to cover it up. But yeah, if it works, it works. I mean, that's it. Me, I just look at that and I'm like, well, pink? Maybe I'll have to try it. Not today, though. Not today. I don't think so. Because mostly because we're going for a greenish yellow. Which I'm thinking about uh, because we're going to have some green on this now. So now I need to go for contrast. So now we may need to shift to an orangish yellow. So again, we're informing our decisions, right? We've decided to go with dark skin. We decided to go with green hair and go very wood elf with her, right? Um, but then if we go with a green yellow here, we're going for more of an analogous color scheme in that point, right? And if we want contrast, we may want to shift it. Yeah, I have a plan. Yeah, well, many things are an option. Burnt oranges are an option. Ochre yellows are an option. Technically, raw sienna plus white is an option. You have so many options with yellow. People um, just don't know how to deal with it, typically. So it's uh, because because they'll go for their bright yellow out the gate instead of something slightly darker. And I feel with yellow, starting with your shadow color is really instrumental. Um, yo, Absalon, sup? Long time no see. Um, but yeah, so... Now I'm kind of shifting because I'm like, well, do I want to go with more of an orangey yellow? Or maybe I just want to go with a very neutral yellow. Maybe I just want to go with that ochre. Cool, Silver. Hello, Jarrett's. Uh, it's going. We're talking about yellow. And I just was introduced to the weird concept of underpainting yellow with pink. So I'm like, uh, I'm like, okay, this is really weird to me. <laughs> Um, I'm not deciding that yet, Crows. Okay, so here's the dealio, guys. How Anne paints. I start with a few key colors and I work out from there, but I don't make all my decisions up front. It's like, it's I, I game or I, I paint like I GM. I don't need to know that yet, so I'm not going to make that decision. Because as I work with this, depending on if we do do freehand on the dress, somewhere we're going to be introducing an accent color. I don't know yet what that accent color is going to be. Until I know what that accent color is going to be, I don't make that decision. This is this is a decision that you make at the end of the model. Unless, again, you are working with a PC who is very specific about, you know, what it has to be. Yeah, well, I'm sure I know what it does in Aura. It just gives you a complex orange shadow, right? So it's interesting. It's interesting, but I, and I guess it, it if it gives you that a different, it'll give you a different look, like, right? Because you're going with that complex shadow with the yellow layered over the pink. I can see why it works. It's just never a combo that uh, that occurred to me to use. Uh, but I mean, I'm kind of have a mindset like that where sometimes I think people get a little too clever with color where I'm like, okay, well that gives me a complex shadow, but couldn't I have just painted that in? And I do a lot of underpainting. So it's just like, I don't know. 
maybe I just need to try it and see how, see how it works. I don't think, uh, I certainly don't think it's bad. And if you've done it and it works and you like it, then rock it. All right. I don't know about this ready. I think I want to change up our ready flesh a little bit. I think I want to go a little more brown with it. So ready flesh is a very golden color. And if you recall, it gives us a golden dark skin tone like Zari here. Let me grab Zari and stick out of. Because Staccato never, ever let Zari out of her sight. So Staccato has to be here if I show off Zari. Um, so Zari, this is Zari's skin tone. And Zari's skin tone is based off of the ruddy leather. Or sorry, ruddy flesh. So it's golden and it's dark. But I think I want it a little different with Lizette. Um, maybe not quite as gold. So I think I'm going to grab... Lemonade! You're right, Epsilon! Totally lemonade. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that it makes an interesting yellow. Jarrett's. But then I'm like, I don't know. I just look at that and I'm like, but why wouldn't I just paint it that way first? <laughs> Like, I can see black and white underpainting, right? I really believe in black and white underpainting. Like, it really helps and can be really cool. Um, and it can set up, you know, what you're doing and then you go over it. But I'm looking at, if you're painting the whole surface in browns and pinks and then you're just, like, covering it up with yellow, it just seems weird to me. I guess if you have a lot of trouble with yellow, though, and that helps you to get past that trouble with yellow, it's worth it. So, I mean... It's not that I'm against it, it's that I'm weirded out by it. <laughs> totally weirded. All right, what brown do I want to add? Because I don't, what, my thing is, I don't want it this yellow. Wants pink lemonade now. Well, yeah, that's kind of my point, Pendrake. You could use anything with a lot of white in it as an undercoat for yellow. It, and it, you know, if you're covering it all up anyway, then it's not really going to matter. It'll maybe give you a greener or an oranger shadow, depending on what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's why, that's why Palomino gold or mustard yellow is even better. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I tend to just use the ochres, but again, but every yellow I paint is different. I paint it so seldom. So I don't really care to try it, Valandar. I think I know what it'll do. I know how colors interact. Once you have, once you get how colors and pigments interact, you can extrapolate how it looks and why it'll work, you know, but, but for me, I'm just like, why wouldn't I just paint it in? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, right. So you're using a yellow glaze to go over and you're just painting it pink. Under yeah. So you're underpainting, you're underpainting in the purest sense of the word and you're choosing pink because that's going to give it a slight orangey color, right? Yeah. So it's going to work. I see why it works. And like I said, if it works for you, go. Um, all right. I want, do I want, do I want Russet or do I want Shield, guys? Let's see here. Where did I put my Shield Brown? Did I eat it? Like, sometimes my browns run away. Is that more like what I want? Maybe it is. Yeah, I know that, Quindy. Uh, but didn't it come back? I thought it was back in Bones. I thought I saw it when I was scrolling through the bones line the other day. I thought it had been brought back lower down in the bones line, if you go to the website. And as I mentioned, several people saw bottles. So I'm going to put a couple drops of shield in there because I just want it more. I want it a little less gold. I may put also some russet to darken it down. Or I'll make a new puddle. To darken it down. The thing is that the shield brown isn't really going to change it much. So now I'm making a really complicated skin tone. Boop. We'll put one drop of russet. Hmm. Don't see mustard on the site? Interesting, Cookie. Maybe I was imagining things the other day. I was looking through all the all the paint lines just to refresh my memory on what I might need. Okay, I like this a little better. Um, so I added in two drops of shield. I was starting with four drops of uh, of ruddy flesh, which is very, very golden. But I decided I wanted to start a little bit more darker and woodsy. So I went, okay, 
cool guys thanks for double checking uh, so then I went with one, two drops of shield brown and one drop, a small drop of russet. So I'm going to actually write that down so I don't forget it on my Lizette sticky note. Skin. Four, two, one. Ready. Shield. Russet. Taking a small moment to write down your formulas is always good. Yay. All right, I like this color actually a lot for a dark skin tone. It's almost like the olive shadow, almost, but not as green. No, I was I thought I was looking at the list, so I must have uh, seen something else and it triggered me thinking of mustard yellow cookie. Anyway, mustard yellow, if you want to mix it, if you want to get close to it, it's half Palomino gold and half uh, lantern will get you close to the color. Won't get you the same coverage, but it'll get you close to the color. Okay, let's try this. Let's see how this skin tone works. Going with the Lizette of color today. I like that color. That's actually a really nice color. It's close enough to the ruddy skin, the ruddy flesh, but it's just a little darker. It's a little bit more neutral. I have to figure out what I'm going to shade it with. Should have kept my dark skin tones out because this is one where I probably would shade it with like dark skin. Might have to mix something equivalent. The other nice thing about the Bones USA is that they, um, they're gray and so they actually show up perfectly against the background. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, the biggest downside is probably the cost of the molds bug lips. So, I mean, I don't know anything about the new Kickstarter, but I kind of assume that it's going to be funding for Bones USA. Because um, Ed has long said that he wants uh, Bones to be made in the USA. So, if he's hard committing to that, we will need a lot of new machinery. I was talking to David about this last night. Because if this is produced on like our existing machinery we're gonna need more of those more machines to keep up with demand and that's expensive yeah redstone shadow yep yep yeah it's really ruddy i uh, if you want um if i do that i'll just mix I'll, I'll end up mixing these colors because i don't have them immediately at my side and the reason that i don't have redstone shadow at my side is i know that i can mix uh, 9070 and 9137 and get very close so you see my evil um evil plan guys is essentially my the reason i have so few paints or, i mean i have 100 paints down there but the reason that i keep a fairly limited palette close at hand is that I know how to mix the rest of it or or mix it so close maybe not a precise match but mix it close enough that I can get what I want so I like this color you guys like this color I kind of like it yeah it's true in our you can get around that by um you know putting pennies in the bases or whatever like if you remount them on plastic I've gotten, I mean, in gaming, I've, I've discovered I don't care too much because the upside is that if uh, Bones models get tipped over on the table, they're not going to chip. So I like the weight of metal also. Um, but I do like this material. Having worked now with removing some of the mold lines, it's not as bad as Bones straight up. Um, and uh, the paint's going onto it nicely. The detail is very nice. Even David. David is a, a bit of a snob as far as uh, plastic minis go. And uh, he was even impressed by the Bones USA. So. So really it's then it's like, you know, um, is just getting the infrastructure together to to go more into Bones USA. I said the cost of the molds, the cost of more machines to produce the models the manpower it takes to run those machines. Although I think uh, Ed once said that you could have one person running four Thomas type machines at a time without losing efficiency. There we go. 
Yeah, I really like the gray Polaris. I'm, I'm with you. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, I decided to um, modify my original ruddy flesh. We decided to go with a more of a wood elf look for Lisette. So we're going to do green hair um, and we're going to do, uh, I wanted a, a brown flesh that would go a little bit better with what I envisioned for green hair. Uh, so I wanted to mute it a little bit because ruddy gets very, very golden. It's a very, ni it's a really nice dark skin color, but here. So maybe you guys can see that uh, Zari is a lot more yellow, right? So, so that's just something to keep in mind. You can always tune the skin colors. I mean, you got to watch it so you don't get something unnatural, but I do a lot of like just customization of skin tones. Just adding a little bit of something else. Like if I want tan skin, but I want it a little more ruddy, I'll add, you know, maybe a little darker. I'll add some 9070 or I'll add some redstone shadow or I'll add redstone highlight if I want tifflings, you know, and want that reddish undertone. And then I'll use more of a red to shade it, you know, things like that. You can, you can tweak your skin tones slightly and still not lose the feel of them being skin tones. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Jerome. Well, the the big metal monsters have mostly disappeared, haven't they, Pendrake? Like, most of those, the ones that we decided to keep around have gone to regular bones, which is a great fit for them. And if we do scale back from the bones material and go more toward the bones USA, like I said, that's going to take a while probably to ramp up. Um, but then, I, yeah, I could see monsters ending up in this, but... All right, and her leg is bare. You can always paint her as if she has like tights on or something if you want to, but this is a nice opportunity to carry the skin tone down. I like this brown. I am very happy with this brown and glad I made a note of it. I'll probably use it on dark skin tone models in the future. Alrighty. Eh? Good, good, good. So her boots are down there. They've got their little cough. She's so cute. She's just, Lisette is so cute. Um, I think they're about the same. Um, but I don't know, having just, we're going to get sharper here. Hey, I need to put her on a block. And guess what? I have an extra block right here. You just reminded me we were talking about hydrophobic and then I was thinking about finger oils, although my hands are really dry. Oh, said we? Oh, the color that I'm using for the skin? I mixed it. So it is a four to two to one ruddy flesh. Ruddy flesh. The really golden skin tone, dark, dark skin tone color. Two drops of shield to make it more woodsy and one drop of russet to darken it slightly. Um, I don't know. Sorry, got taken off her block when she got finished, but I had a couple of blocks around Absalon, so it may be, uh, Zari's block may have, Zari had the big block though, didn't she? Right now that block is empty. Um, like she and Staccato were sharing a block. Because again, Staccato doesn't go anywhere without Zari, and Zari goes nowhere without Staccato. It's just the way it is. There we go. Oh, this looks like it's taking the paint better. I am working a little bit thick with my paint. I guess I added one drop. This is probably about a five to one. So it's a little thicker than my normal base coat just because I wasn't sure what I was headed into. So, all right. And yeah, I think that's good. So I wonder what I should use for shadows. 
So when you're off in uh, brand new paint color land, guys, then sometimes you have to stop and think about what triad would I put on this? If I was doing this as a skin tone triad, what would I add to it to make it darker? And the answer probably for me, let's see here. No, no. Where did I put my 9070? There's my 9070. Then there's that. I don't want to put too much black in this. Okay, so the reason that you don't want to put too much black in this is that it is a very yellow skin color still. Because ruddy flesh, you can see how yellow that is, right? So if you put black in that, it's going to go green. And we're already going to have green hair, so I don't want the skin tone to shift green. Which means I need to shift it red. Um, walnut is way too black, Shadow Spawn. Way too black. Uh, good point. She has ears. Thanks for the reminder, Moon Wombs. Not that, I mean, I'm not going to get rid of my, my base color, but yes, you're right. I always forget the ears with elves because they're always like way back here, hiding in the hair. Ears. Um, but yeah, so do you guys get that reasoning where if she's going to have green hair already um, and if adding any color with high black is going to make the skin tone shift green, how I would not want to do that because that would be bringing the skin tone closer to the hair color. Pardon me, I need to really get the green stuff up around her base here so she doesn't come off. I have to kind of fold it up sometimes to cl so it makes a little clamp. All right, there's one ear. Yeah, thanks to Moon Glooms for reminding me about ears. It's so easy to forget ears. Um, yeah, you could add purple. It would mute it down because of the yellow. So you may want to use a reddish purple trouble if you did that. Um... For me, remember that muting, I mean, sometimes the muting will gray out your color, though. So sometimes you want to go, um, well, let's do an experiment. I mean, I'm betting it'll be about the same, but let's, let's switch some of this. Because if we're going to add a purple, the only purple we can really add is probably going to be Monarch. Because we don't want black in it. So then I have to find my Monarch purple... There it is, 92.39. So we're going to make two puddles, and we're going to assess them. So I used two brushfuls of our base, and I'm just going to add a dab of Monarch Purple, which is a dark reddish purple. But its darkness comes entirely from, a, from blue pigment. So I'm going to just add a tiny drop of that over there. Just like what I call half a drop, which is I squeeze out most of a drop and then I dab it against the side of the palette. Half a drop. And then we'll mix it in and we'll kind of assess it. And then we'll do one with my original call, which was the russet and mahogany. And we'll see which one we like better. Grab some water. I might need to add a little bit more. Yeah, I do need to add just a bit more. It's shifting nicely. I mean, Monarch Purple, I've used as a shadow for golden type skin tones before on my Circe. But here I've, I, can, I can put in a lot more, I think. So almost a full drop. But at this point, this is a full drop. So it's going to shift it purpley and darkly. Darkly. <laughs> so that's kind of a cool shadow. That's a neat, interesting shadow. Can you guys see the kind of the purple shift to let me get my big black base? The big black base helps to make things look like they actually look. There, now you can see the purple shift, right? So it's up to you whether you like that purple shift or not. So I'm actually going to darken it even more. Because I feel like it's not quite dark enough. It's still too close in. You can see how, how this is probably maybe a 7 and that's maybe an 8 on the grayscale, right? So they're really close. So then I'm adding more purple. Now the problem is the blue is going to start getting really in there. It's going to mute it down a bit. So it's very much a purpley color now. More like a bruisey color. Which could work. But, but it's bruisey, so it's like a bruise. And, it, and then I'm like, well, is this going to really work for a shadow? Maybe, actually. Especially if we went up. If we were going to highlight this with, a, with yellow, purely yellow, then it may work just peachy. Um, but let's try my other option, because I'm curious now. And I think I'm going to mix just... Um, I think I can do this. I can make a, a minor puddle with two one and one half. So two drops of ruddy... One of shield. 
and then one half of russet. I hope I have more russet hanging around. Half of russet. And then uh, in addition to that, I want a full drop of russet and a full drop of mahogany brown. Mahogany brown is 9070 and it's very red. It's worked off of a red base. I will talk about this. Hey guys, my $5, I'm almost done with my $2 video editing. I did chain mail this time, metallics um, on a bigger model, but uh, for the $2 video for my Patreon. But uh, the $5 video is gonna be on de deconstructing colors where you know you add, you can add a bit of white or something else to kind of get the colors to look, how to, how to kind of assess what the colors are made of. So here we're going more red, which means it's gonna go more orange, less purple. Probably gonna end up a deep copper color. Kind of a dark, dark brown copper. I like that, but it needs to be darker. So another drop of russet and another drop of mahogany. Because if I'm adding, if I have a yellowish skin tone and I'm adding red to it, it's gonna go orange, right? And a muted orange is brown. So this will probably end up a reddish brown, coppery dark, coppery dark brown. Sometimes I just make colors on here where I'm like, ooh, that needs to be color. And then I remember I'm not making the paint line anymore. I'm like, oh, <laughs> alrighty. So that's a nice dark, rich brown, right? And it doesn't have the weird purple shift that that has. And it, if I was making a triad, this makes more sense than this because people picking up a triad that looks like that are going to be kind of like, well, that's weird. Those colors don't look like they go together. Um, but people looking at, at a triad that's these two colors would go, oh, okay, that looks like a really interesting skin tone triad. So you you have to ask yourself what you're gonna what your goal is at that point. It's like, well, do I want more of an otherworldly skin tone on her, or do I want to paint her very down to earth, um, like a wood elf adventurer, um, and not terribly magical? So it depends on like, if you're going for wood elves, you have to ask yourself, well, what are wood elves in my world? Are they more fey? In which case the purple shadow may work or are, is this more of an adventuring class? In which case maybe they're just, you know, they're a different flavor of elf. Um, so those are how you make that decision, right? Hey, Roger, how's it going? See, now you guys have me thinking about that pink and yellow thing. And I'm just like, well, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just so weird. Alrighty, but I'll probably base what I do on the yellow off of how the skin tone turns out. So I really like this really warm brown. It's very, you see how it's it's really rich. It has a really rich color. Um, we can try, I think that this may be a good color for like her cheeks, like the red, the reddishness on her face, like the red areas could uh, benefit from this purple. So I'm going to use it there. And I'll thin it down a little bit and maybe apply. It reminds me a lot of redstone, actually, this purpley we've made, this one. It's like a muted redstone. Oh, she just wants to come off her block. She's like, I want to come off of my block. Just adding a blob of red across her face there. I am going to take this off, knead it up, because just like with Silly Putty, you're... Your poster tack benefits and gets more goopy when you knead it up and add heat to it. So if I need a model to stick better, it's time to get goopy. All right, let's see here. Broaden it out, stick it on, stick on the mini. Get her really firmly seated in there. Then get my little edges kind of pushed up under her base so they stick. Eh, eh. Stick, please. Thank you. You have bacon. That's great. I chose. I chose to do. Um, we did uh, twice baked potatoes last night, which um, I'd always wanted to make, and finally got around to making. We had uh, ribeye for my anniversary of moving to California. Yeah, that's too dirty. Don't like that. Yeah, I think the purple might be just a little bit too dirty looking over the main skin tone. I think I'm not convinced. I think I want to use more of a more of a straight up red shade there. 
So, you know, you can try it, and then if you don't like it, you can paint your base coat over the top of it and revise. So for me, when I put this purple on, it just looked, it looked more dirty. It wasn't, like, warm enough for me. Um, so I'm going to try to do something else. In fact, I'm going to mix up just some 9070 and see if that works for warm shadows on the cheeks. You need some red tones in the face, usually. Even in wood elves. Even wood elves have blush. Um, we were playing around with mixing. Since I mixed this uh, skin color custom, Derek, we were, we were playing. Somebody suggested purple, so I mixed a purple, and we tried it. And then I went like, that's too dirty and not, not warm enough. This is another color I mixed we haven't tried yet. Um, I don't think I want to go black and brown because there's so much yellow in my base skin tone. If I start doing mixes with that, it's going to go green. And since she's a wood elf, and we're going to give her green hair, um, I don't want the skin tone to go too green. I want some contrast. So I'm, I'm wary of using colors with a lot of black in them uh, with this particular skin. Which isn't to say that I might not use that color to like line and stuff, but you know. Thank you, Absalon. Yeah, Californiversary. That's where I am. So, uh, but yeah, we made ribeye and twice baked potato. David had never had a twice baked potato. Like, it's like your mom is Midwestern. What went wrong? <laughs> for for somebody who grew up in Wisconsin, like she, you would think she would expose you to twice baked potatoes at some point, <laughs> or at least that's where you know I saw them all the time. Although I saw plenty in Texas as well. All right, now this may be too red. Like, this is where we get into the weird skin tone thing, guys. And I'm, I'm, f I'm fast moving this way. Oh. Do not give me stupid notifications, Windows. Oh, I don't, I don't use a particular sticky stuff. I just use blue tack or some variation thereon, original. Um... Twi okay, twice baked potato, Jared, says where you bake the potato, cut it in half, scoop out the innards, mix the innards with sour cream or Greek yogurt and cheese and salt and pepper, and you do all your all your mixing and seasoning, and sometimes mostly, but um, also butter, until you have a nice, really smooth kind of whipped consistency. Then you refill your potato shells, put cheese and chives on the top, and stick it in the oven so that it can brown and crust. And so then you have a baked potato that already has all its ingredients mixed in that tastes fantastic and has a really soft, smooth, silky consistency. And if you're me, you also, when you first bake the potato, you use olive oil and a lot of sea salt on the, on the outside of the potato so that when you, then when you cut it, yes, <laughs> then when you cut it, um, you get that salty, crispy outside skin and then the, the smooth filling, which is really tasty. Um... But they're not too many carbs, Chibi. Like, a potato itself is, I mean, it does. But if you're only eating half, I only ate half of my half last night because it was so filling. But all the other ingredients I'm putting in aren't carby. So, not too terrible. Eh, I don't know, Omidar. I, uh, yeah, it's more work, but I kind of enjoy, that's part of what I like about cooking. Is that it's more, yeah, it gives me more, I, I really liked the result. I don't like regular baked potatoes very much. But I like twice baked. Like potatoes are really um, a thing I could do without and have done without for years in my diet. I normally don't uh, utilize them because they're nightshades and I have a reaction to tomatoes. But uh, I decided to make an exception last night because I haven't yet had, yet had a reaction to potatoes. I just try to keep them very minimal. Never been, been a big french fry person unless they're really crispy. Uh, salt and vinegar fries are pretty good though. So a little bit of red in the cheeks. But yeah, Omidar, you're right. It is more work. Um, but I kind of cut that down just by baking the potatoes in the afternoon. And then they had time to cool down so I could handle them. And then when it came down to prep dinner, it was only 15 extra minutes. So I think I do need a liner color. I think Derek is right on the black and brown. Uh, where are my black and browns? When you're doing dark skin tones, sometimes to really see them, you need to do your lining.
Yeah, we do that too. We do roasted potatoes actually, or I do roasted root vegetables. I prefer turnips and parsnips and carrots and onions. And then I'll throw in a couple of small potatoes for David, but but I, uh, I do love roasted root vegetables. And we'll usually do them in duck fat because I have duck fat. But yeah, I'm not a, but overall, I'm not a potato fan, especially because I've discovered I really like like turnips and parsnips which are lower carb and I like, I love the flavor of parsnips. I will absolutely gladly never eat a potato again if I can have plenty of parsnips. I haven't decided the highlight yet, Grey Wolf. Because I want to, uh, I want to take Derek's suggestion and use some black and brown to line around this quick. So essentially I'm going to map in the shadow when you're doing dark skin tones next to like a lighter primer, or in this case, the lighter, um, surface of the miniature, it can be very hard for you to assess how, if your shadows are dark enough or if your highlights are light enough. So getting that lining color in whatever it is can help separate the face from the rest of the model and help you assess whether you're really, uh, nailing like your highlights and shadows. Because I could highlight this face and think, oh, that doesn't look light enough because it's right next to this medium light gray. And then once I paint the rest of the figure, I'm like, oh my gosh, my highlights look terrible. They're way too high because I didn't have that frame of reference. So I'm adding this um, around. Uh, oh, we're going to go green, Absalon, because Wood Elf. We decided to go like more fantasy Wood Elf. So I'm going to go green, uh, but I haven't decided the particular green yet. Probably I will figure out the dress before I figure out the hair because the dress is the key color, the yellow. So. Oh, really? Oh, no, studio. Oh, Derek, that's terrible. That's terrible. Dragonlance, how dare you put that out there? Uh, fantasy, fantasy worlds and cooking. I mean, I know there's, like, lots of people trying to, like, approximate the wow recipes, you know. Seems to be a thing to do wow cooking. Or approximations of wow recipes, uh, in real life. But, uh, man, that's just bad. Yeah, I mean, everything, everything is morphing. Um, I do very much like stage paint. Like I do kind of work out. If you would, you would like to watch my boyfriend, David work Absalom because he would block everything in all at once. But then, you know what? Then he changes it, you know, a lot. Like I've seen him adjust like, um, like the latest one he's working on for Golden Demons is a beautiful, um, techless that he heavily converted but um, the first color block in that he did, he thought he was happy with until he realized he was really unhappy with it. <laughs> Whereas me, when I'm working out like this, I almost never, almost never do I run into a point where I have to repaint something. Because I'm, I'm working organically from my first color, so if something starts to go wrong, I see it right away. And I can adjust, instead of committing to a green now and then having to adjust it, as I um, expand on the skin tones, then I can complete the skin tones in the dress and then I can make my green decision based on that. Oh, that's funny muses. So how are the Dragonlance recipes? Yukon potato. Yeah, that sounds tasty, Shadow Spawn. I mean, if I liked potatoes. I like Zatar but I don't like potatoes. I would be more likely to try it with turnips. Although I am loosening up my diet a little bit, guys, because uh, this, um, this Noom thing that I'm trying, it's working. Like, I'm down a little bit more weight this week. Like, I'm, I'm losing slowly, but then I'm not, like, super overweight, so... There are people on the app who are like complaining because they're not losing like three pounds a week. And I'm just kind of looking at them going, <laughs> I'm happy with losing a pound a week. It's more than I was losing before. Let's 
So yeah, I'm loosening up my diet. Like David was joking because we had uh, we had a pretty sinful dessert last night too to celebrate the uh, the move anniversary. He went down to the patisserie and got us uh, this glorious chocolate mousse with creme brulee center. You guys on my Patreon uh, Discord can totally see the picture of it. I posted it up in the food the food thread, food channel. Um, it was ridiculous with a with a chocolate fudgy mirror glaze and everything. And then and then I stepped on the scale this morning and I'm down like you know down 0.6 pounds. It's like yes, desserts mean I lose weight. That's totally. My choco bun, it was tiny. It's, um, they make these, the patisserie makes little micro desserts. So like, um, little micro dessert, kind of round it like this. It was, it was like one of those desserts where you don't need a lot of it because it is so freaking decadent. Like you have one tiny bite of it and it satisfies your chocolate craving for the whole day. <laughs> so it was beautiful. Um, I do love them. We try to only get the fancy desserts from that place, uh, for special occasions because they're so good. But it is pretty nice to, like, I can see why David likes living in cities, because right near downtown, we're walking distance from so many places. So he didn't even have to get in the car. He just, like, got out, walked to the place, and brought dessert home. Which is kind of nice. I can see that. I have never lived in a, in a city proper before. I suppose this isn't, like, a big city. It's not a big me metropolis or anything, but... We're not living in San Francisco. I guess Denton counts. I guess I did. I, and I guess I did live like downtown Madison. But that's, that's so far away. And it was totally in, in dorms. And dorms just don't give you the same feel. So just doing a little bit of lining here. Around the little details. Yeah, I love chocolate too. Yeah, I agree, Inara. Weight goes on slowly. No reason it should come off faster. Oh my gosh, Ashley, that's terrible. Grade D, but edible. Yuck. Oh, hey, love. Yeah, it is kind of nice that way. I will give it to you, love. I'm like, this is, I mean, like I said, otherwise I hadn't lived in a city since, like, college. It is nice. It is certainly nice um, with COVID to be able to just walk, it, order out, walk, get it, you know, stay outside. And weirdly, I think it encourages me to get outside more in a way just to walk to get things. Like when I have to mail something, I just walk to the post office or the UPS store instead of getting in my car like I would in Texas. So... It does seem to encourage uh, moving more if you embrace that aspect of it. I'm doing this tiny buckle at her throat. Oh, tiny buckle. Why? Why, Werner? Why, Bobby? Why, why Talon? Why did you art this? <laughs> Little tiny bits of lining. Oh, thank you, love. Yeah. I'm sure you look fab. Oh, love, I wanted to ask you something. So uh, I went and I realized I couldn't sub to you because um, because you hadn't like gotten to affiliate yet. Is that because you need more viewers on your streams? Like, is that because I know you've got the number of followers you need because I looked. Because I wanted to sub to you and I couldn't do it. Because I, I and I need to respond on your uh, Oni that you uh, painted too. Yeah, yeah, Inara. Well, I don't know. I was walking when it was 102 and 8 p.m. So, but yes, it if it uh, might have uh, changed my my mind if it was 108. Texas just uh, air conditioning is our defense. Oh, I see. You can't have a business out of your apartment. Weird. Like, isn't side like Twitch is more side gigging? Weird. You can't be self self employed. Oh, well, okay. Well, my, I'm giving you my mental sub <laughs> because if you needed more people, you know, to, to upgrade to where you could accept the subs, then, you know, I would totally promote you because I like seeing new people get out there and start Twitch streaming miniatures. And you've been very brave about it. Like you've been doing some big stuff and ambitious stuff. So you just let me know and I'll try to, to mobilize the forces to get you the views you need. 
And it goes for anybody else here who is trying to stream, like, let Reaper know that you're streaming, you know, and uh, we can try to get you viewers or follows if you need them to get affiliate. Yeah, more than enough, Valentine. That's why I had to ask. <laughs> Val, you can move around without removing, you know, without like blowing into things. <laughs> you are you are just danger prone lately, Val. I do hope that you get to feeling better because like that's a ter that's not a good place to be. I mean, I'm sure the bed is comfy. Don't get me wrong. And you could even rig up a painting rig as long as you keep your water like off your lap. Horrible legal advice, Omidar. <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, see, I would just think it's not running a business out of your apartment. It's just like, you know, like doing stuff online and getting paid if people like you. I mean, weird. I don't know. It, uh, you're probably right, though, love. It's a fine line, right? And uh, so you would ask somebody. But it is a pretty nice little side gig. Um, it's not going to pay my bills, but it, it is going to fund the next puppy. So. <laughs> oh, nice, love. Yeah. Free overlays and stuff. That's really cool. Oh, you do emotes? I need to hit you up. As soon as, if we ever get, if my stream ever gets to the point where I can have more emotes. I don't know. We'll need an emoji when I get the new puppy. It's going to be a while, but you know, the new puppy will probably deserve an emoji, an emoji because Kiri had one. Yeah. Yes. Well, I stream on Thursdays now, guys. I've decided I've committed. Thursdays are my stream day. I've, I've dropped Tuesday because I'm getting a lot more done now that I... I just have a lot more energy earlier in the week, so it, it makes sense for me to um, utilize that to do to work on projects for the Patreon and stuff, so and commissions. All right, just gonna do some lining, 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 lining. You've, you've seen me do this before. I do this pretty much after my base coat and sometimes after my shadow as well. Lining is itself a form of shading. Especially on 28s, where you need to kind of pop that. You see how that's making the skin tone stand out more? Oh, nice! Oh, I like the puppy face trouble. And both of the puppy faces. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, definitely tape it. Yeah! Yeah, I know. With toes, you can't really do anything. As long as it's not dislocated, in which case they'll put it back into located. <laughs> but then you just have to kind of suffer through it. Yeah. I, I also, I dislocated my um, my pinky toe years ago. I get it. I get it, Val. Just take care of yourself. Alrighty. And I like to kind of get that in there. So our skin tone is still pretty golden, as you can tell. So my question now, as Absalon was asking about highlights, so the question I have now is, am I going to bring up the skin tone even more golden? Or am I going to try to bring it up somewhere, like, somehow differently? Like, am I am I not going to mix... Am I going to mix up, do a mixture of, like, a kind of a pale yellow and white instead? Am I going to use more white, less yellow to bring up this skin tone. Um, what am I going to do with it, right? And so to do that, prime them with pink. Pink and gold. I bet the, um, I bet the Discord's just erratic because Discord... But yeah, so I need to question what I'm going to do. And I've got, I've pretty much got three options to highlight this skin tone with. Either I can mix this like with a white or an off-white and take it up that way. Or I can mix this with a combo of white and say a pale yellow, which is more like a sunlight where if you want, if it's more of a golden skin tone, often under sunlight, it will go really golden in its highlights. So I could go that way. 
Or I could go and mix a skin tone, a normal skin tone, and then maybe yellow and white if I wanted it to to highlight more toward um, just a, a little bit uh, less golden, less yellow. Um, <laughs> Inara, wow. Yeah, if Inara survived. Oh, Pitastro, yeah. I don't prime them, but I mean, your mileage may vary. Everybody's asking because at least they want to paint bones. I'm okay with answering that question ad infinitum. I mean, when it comes down to like, that's what a frequently asked question is, right? Is you hear it so often you get totally sick of it. But it means that people are interested in it and wanting to do it, wanting to paint the bones. So I'm okay. I don't mind telling them like that I don't, but they can if they want to. The one thing I don't like is people answering in the extremes like never or always or, you know, it's like. Everybody's going to have a different experience. Lining the fingers. Please line your fingers, everybody. It really helps them. Fingers enjoy lining. It helps them stand out. They're so tiny. They get so lost if you don't line them. Fingers don't like being lost. Line your fingers. Yes, I'm feeling a little whimsical this morning. I'm sorry. Not really sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Hey, is it stretch time? Ooh, it's way past stretch time. You guys failed in your stretch reminder duty. That's mostly, I should have set my alarm. But I will get up and stretch as soon as I finish lining this thumb. Because look, look now. Look how those fingers are all like individual and you can see them. Always line your fingers. And if you're working on a bigger model where the lining would look unnatural, just use your, like, your shadow color to line your fingers or your shadow color mixed with a little bit of brown liner or something. So now we've got almost all of it. I need to darken her eyes, line around the ears and the leg, and then we can move on. Oh, I like it. John, the paint's sticking on really well. I think this is our first, uh, first Pro Tips Bones USA, guys, so... Yeah, I see it. Oh, wow. Rosemary and Company brushes. Good, good, good. Yeah, you should do the starter set. Buy the uh, Master Series starter set, love. That's pretty inexpensive. It gives you 11 colors to play with. And you can play with those and decide if you like the paint. And if you really like the paint, then you can invest. But I always recommend the starter set. Those are colors I handpicked. Yeah, yeah. Look up the Master Series. The MSP starter set should be what it's called. Maybe somebody can can pop a link in there. Quindy, Quindy, are you there? <laughs> but the starter set has the pure white and the pure black. It has a couple of metallics. It has a good green, Naga green. has a good blue, dragon blue. Uh, good yellow, I think it's candlelight, and then a good red. So it's got it's got a nice uh, variety for you to play with. Up oh, Reaper John, Reaper John has it there. There's your link, love. And it's just because it's only eleven colors, it's just it's really affordable. So it's a really easy way. It's a really easy way to get in and see if you like it without losing too much money. And chances are you're going to use the black and the white if nothing else, even if you decide you don't like some of the other colors. All right, stretch, everybody. We're late on our stretch break. All right. Whew. Ah, search snail fail. <laughs> no problem. Ah, there we go. But yeah, I, I usually recommend the starter because I don't want people to buy in and buy like the first 54 and then turn out not to like the paint and, uh, you know, and then you've spent all that money. Um, the starter is a lot more easy. And if you want to pare that down, you can look at the colors in the starter and maybe just pick five of them to start with and to try it out. You could even do that and go with just five colors. Um, 
But the starter might give you enough to uh, get free shipping, so. I don't remember what's the, if $40 is the cutoff for free shipping. John, what is it? Is it 35, 40, 45? I forget for free shipping cutoff. You have faith in my paints. Yay! What are the minimum number of colors you need to start painting miniatures? Pat, you know, um, you know, it, I think that that's a good start. I mean, it gives you, it gives you red, yellow, um, green, blue. I mean, are there, are there colors that, that help you mix better? Like where that might be more utilitarian? Like, yeah, yeah, there are. Um, I mean, I, I personally find that more transparent, brighter colors let me mix more, but I mean, that's a good start. Um, and I think russet brown is in there. It's got a good brown. Yeah, I mean, Chibi brings up, you can get along with just red, yellow, blue, white, black. Like, you can mix a lot of colors from that. But you have to be really good at color mixing to get your full mileage out of that. So if you... Yeah, I think that 11. Like, and it depends. Like, Pat, the, the thing is here, right, is there's two approaches you can do. You can get the starter set and then have just generalized tools, right? You won't have a dark blue. You won't have a dark green, right? But technically you could mix black in and, and get something decent. Um, but if you are looking to paint something specific, then I think it pays to customize a starter set for yourself of about 10 colors. There we go, bug lips. Free UPS, USPS shipping to any US destination valued at 40 or $40. Okay, cool. Yeah, love's in San Francisco, so we're good. Ah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you've got muddy brown on there. It's really versatile. Tan skin is our best skin color and most versatile one. You can add white to it. You can add a brown to it. It's going to uh, shift how you like it. Cloudy gray is my most useful gray. The heraldic red is really good. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, that's a, that's a good selection to original. But yeah, here, let me do my, uh, my floor stretches guys and we can talk more. But I mean, sometimes people come to me and they're like, well, I need some starter paints and I'm painting a bunch of like orcs and goblins for my first D&D &D campaign. You know, then the starter set might not be your best set. You might want to switch it up because you're gonna be paint, painting a lot of one thing. It depends how good you are at mixing, as I mentioned. All right, there's my stretches. Stretches complete. Let us come back and hydrate. And then I have to figure out what I'm gonna do to highlight the skin. All the paints and all the minis. Oh, is it? They changed it up a little bit then. It's nice that they put the bone color in there. All of the Master Series in a kit is like, like a thousand dollars. That's a lot. That's a lot, love. We do sell the 600 color corset and then you could get all the bones. If I were gonna, if I were gonna go whole hog, love, I think I would like pick up the starter set that gives you a lot of core. But I would also pick up, like, if I was going to get a complete set of anything, it would be the Bones set, which is smaller than the complete core set. But Bones is, like, Bones is a set where I feel like I really came into my own as a paint line designer. And it has some new technology in it. It pretty much has all of the tricks and knowledge that I picked up over the 15 years I was making Master Series. I feel like all of that got integrated into the Bones paint line. So, like, I feel that as a set, Bones is extremely strong. Somebody ate it, Chibi. But yeah, you can totally go overboard collecting paint. But I always recommend people collect just a little bit at a time. Because it's fun. It's fun to collect paint. So, pardon me guys, I'm a little crooked here. There we go. 
Uh, and because it's fun to collect paint, you should let yourself collect it a little bit at a time so that you can enjoy collecting it for longer and budget. That is my personal opinion, but I know people love to buy huge, gigantic paint sets. So if they didn't love buying huge, gigantic paint sets, uh, Dick Blick wouldn't sell them. So I'm going to try this uh, rich, um, dark shadow that I made. Got a shade the decolletage, so to speak. So this is the warm brown that I made by mixing mahogany into the base color along with more russet brown. It can get very difficult to um, to do shadows on something so small. I was just reading in my Patreon Discord that somebody was having so much trouble keeping their midtone. Um, while they were doing shading and highlights. And that's probably one of my most common maladies that I hear about from people who are who are trying to get better is um, if they're working on really small minis, like 28s, they... Here, let me get that out of there so we can see it. They have trouble with keeping highlights. Here, let me get this. I forgot we, uh, we did a... I put it down for a minute. There we go. Now we can see. So it can be very difficult when you're working with such small areas to add in your shadows, add in your highlights, and still keep your mid-tone, right? <laughs> you guys are funny. If I missed a question or something, let me know. Yeah, the triads are really good um, if you're if you're new to painting and you're really not sure what to do with highlighting and shading. The triads can be a good tool for you. Eventually, I think people get a little bit away from the triads because as you gain confidence with mixing, then I think that you start to kind of play around more with colors, especially if you're on a limited budget and you don't want to pick up, you know, 800 paints. Got a shade around the leg here. Got a line around it, rather. I think it's to people's benefit to, like, um, to get acquainted with paint mixing. Like I said, we wouldn't have this really cool skin tone if I hadn't decided to mess around. I tend to like to switch it up. I like my characters to have different skin tones. Used to paint everybody with tan skin, and that's just so very, very boring. All right, so just put a heavy shadow um, under there, which I may back out on. I may come and put in some highlights or repaint that in the future. Because for sure on this, there's going to be some color. I went to Whole Foods yesterday, guys, and, like, that place is just evil. Evil! I had to pick up a steak because I decided that I wanted steak for my, my Caliversary and uh, decided I didn't want to go to Sprouts because they weren't as reliable with um, the quality. Uh, like, just the cut. They're not as reliable with a good cut. So I went to the whole paycheck and man, whole paycheck is just evil. They're just evil. If I shopped there regularly, I would have no money. Um, no, I don't silver. Um, master series is made with flow improver added to it already. So you don't have to add anything extra. I just use water. Sometimes I use my water that has a little bit of flow improver mixed into it. Um, but I, I use water. I don't like mediums because they change the, the basic feel of the paint. Um, so for me, I mean, I because I made the paint line, I really made them out the gate to feel the way and act the way I wanted them to act. So for me, adding mediums would be silly because I just made my ideal paint. Why would I, why would I doctor it at that point, right? So uh, yeah. Better than Whole Foods. Well, Whole Foods is the best one around here. Central Market in Texas was really nice. Yeah, they bought it. 
And that maybe that maybe makes them a little more evil, Pat, I know. Yeah. I don't know, it's still the nicest the one here is still the nicest grocery store I've been to here in Ara. But we have we don't have that many choices. Although I th I'm pretty sure there are like there are some small markets and like butcher shops and stuff that I haven't um, explored yet just because pandemic. So I'm looking forward to all of that getting back on the table, so to speak. <laughs> Whole Foods is just evil because their produce always looks so good. And they've got stuff that my normal grocery store, which is Sprouts, doesn't have. And their seafood section just makes me so happy. But then I can't buy any of it because I don't have plans to use it right away. Like, I would buy all the fish and then I would be sad because fish is something I feel like you buy it and use it the day of. So I'm just going to kind of extend a little shadow down here from her ear just because she's got this little flower on her head. So we want to kind of remember there's a little flower on her head. So this stage, guys, that I'm doing is this introductory stage. Um, and you notice I'm, I'm diverging a, a little bit and I'm like, you know, lining around some small details that have nothing to do with the skin tone. But this is like kind of a, the time I get to know the model. So as I'm lining, I'm kind of picking up little details and stuff like that and uh, making notes about what I might need to address and thinking about what kind of pattern would go on various surfaces. This is my bonding point with the... Uh, the, the sprouts here kind of stinks, Durham. It's an old, old sprouts. It may have been one of the original sprouts. And it's very small. Um, so here, here the Whole Foods is like really nice. Really, really nice. So much so that I went in, the first time David brought me in there, I was like, oh my gosh, a swank Whole Foods, I'm in trouble. Um, but uh, I do love, I do love this Whole Foods. That's why I don't go all the time. I have totally taken advantage of the fact that they are owned by Amazon to uh, to do online orders during the pandemic, though. And that was really a lifesaver sometimes. Being able to do that. Alrighty. I like this skin tone. I keep thinking that I like this skin tone a lot. Alright. Lined around. This ear needs lining. And then we're, then we're set with the lining. So, of course, when we're starting a model, it's always a little more boring. Because it's just getting set up. Set up for awesome. Every model has that phase. Where it's just kind of not really moving along real well. Yep, there's a little flower up there at the top of her braid. Um, okay. Core MSP and Bones. It's just the time frame and the and the goal of the line, um, Omidar. Core was the first line we did, and uh, it has triads. So essentially the paints are organized in groups of three. Most of those triads are going to have a highlight, a midtone, and a shadow. Some are just like colors. So like there's a triad that has three off-whites in it. Um, but often it'll be a highlight, a shadow, and at least earlier in the line, it'll be highlight, shadow, and midtone. So it, it's helpful if you are a newer painter and you aren't sure about mixing highlights and shadows. The other thing is that the core line has specialty colors and specialty paints in it. So it has things like the liners. I talk about brown, brown liner a lot and blue liner. It has the clear brights, which are like single pigment colors that are really, really bright and good for mixing and glazing and light sources. Um, it has the additives. So it has the anti-shine additive, the flow improver. It has the brush on sealers and primers. Um, all of those things are in core. And it's also the biggest line. Um, Bones is a smaller paint line that I did later on in my paint uh, tenure at Reaper, which uh, Ed wanted a Bones branded line um, that, you know, he could market with the Bones miniatures. And so we decided to make it more like uh, what at that time that we had an HD line, which was high density and higher coverage. So we patterned the Bones line after the HD line, so we aimed a bit for a bit higher coverage out the gate with those colors, we also utilized some new technology in the metallics to get shinier but still non-toxic metallics. And as I mentioned earlier to Love, 
Bones really is where I was able to utilize everything I had learned from past paint lines to get a really excellent selection of colors and just very versatile, versatile colors and just a great, a great range. Um, so when people tell me they want to buy one Reaper paint line, my response is usually get bones, but pick up the specialty stuff and the unique colors from core and any other core colors that you like that you want in a triad because bones does not come in triads. There are certain ranges of colors in Bones that you can use as triads, like the blues. If you pick any three blues, more or less, those will work as triads. They're not designed that way, though. They're just That's just the way it happened, because I wanted a range of warm blues. But it's all MSP. It all mixes with each other. It all works together. It's just the goal of the line and the way it is organized and the types of paints that are in it are different. Yes, that is always the case, Omadar. Always the case. If you have a higher coverage paint, it will need to be thinned a little bit more for layering because opacity is the enemy of transparency. They are on opposite ends of a scale. So, you know, you don't, a high coverage paint is just going to need either a little more, a little more thinning usually. I mean, we used higher density pigments instead of a very thick base for our higher coverage paint. So it doesn't need to be thinned as much as Vallejo though. You just maybe need to thin it more than you think. The range of thinning, and you can actually, I think I've got this in a PDF, a free PDF on my Patreon for um, techniques and thinning. You might want to go look. Uh, see what my tier, two, tier zero stuff is. But I think I did, after I did the M thinning MSP paints for Reaper YouTube. So, okay. Omar, go to the Reaper's YouTube. Look for thinning MSP paints. That's the class that I did for ReaperCon last year. And it's free to watch on YouTube. And then if you go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash painting big, then you can find a handout for that class that tells you how much to thin for various techniques. So it'll give you an idea of the general range of how much to thin. There you go. John's got it. Right. And I, de I deconstruct everything. So I am the opposite of the GW school of mini painting, which is ironic because I worked for them. But, um, but yeah, they just give you a fish. They don't teach you to fish. They want you to buy all the different fish. But yes, so essentially, all right, network error. I think I'm up, Durham. But yes, so Reaper John just linked the thinning class. Go there, then go to my Patreon at patreon.com slash painting big and look for the thinning MSP paints handout. And that will tell you, it'll give you like the range, like the complete range of, of here is where I thin blue, here is where I thin white. This is how much I thin it for layering. This is how much I thin it for this, that, and the other thing. Um, I'm here. Yeah, I mean, GW, that's, uh, we were talking about that on how, uh, if, if 3D printing, yesterday I asked this question because David and I were talking about it, but if 3D printing ever got good enough to produce full color models, um, that looked as good as something like that I paint or Derek paints or, you know, Jennifer Haley paints, uh, GW would probably go, you know, to all pre-paints and then would that kill the hobby? Um, because so many people get in to the hobby from, through G Games Workshop. You know, it's, it was an interesting discussion. General consensus was that the hobby would change but not die. All right. And just, I tend to block in the eyes and I tend to do the line of the mouth at this point also. So do I have a little bit of her expression? I still feel like I'm just kind of not sharp. I feel like I'm not sharp. That's better. It's just dark skin tone, so it's hard to see it. Yeah, lining is just better. It's, lining saves you a little time because you don't have to go back over the top of your wash to bring up your colors again. Washes just tend, tend to muddy stuff and they tend to be, they tend to be quick and dirty. <laughs> and if you don't like the, if you do, if you don't mind the dirtiness, use them. If you do mind the dirtiness and you think that, you know, you could just be a little more efficient and use lining instead, use lining. I always uh, tell people like washes are not a compulsory technique. Like you should learn how to utilize them because you can utilize them in targeted manners, 
Like you can you thin to a wash consistency, but then paint it where you want it. And then essentially you're layering. Um, so I still like will utilize washes every once in a while, but it depends on what my goal is. And most of the time with these little guys, uh, with the 28s, I, I prefer the lining. Oh, let's see here. <laughs> it's the old fish analogy. On Danger Man, it's it's not it's not better. Um, it will give you okay if you really don't understand shading, it will give you a fast way to get shadows on your miniature. Will it teach you anything about doing regular shading? Not really. Um, I mean, it'll stick in the cracks, which is a place where shadows would fall, right? You can see in all the cracks here on the model. This is this is probably where a wash would go, and those are places. Given where the light is falling, that's those are places that valid would have a shadow. But then a wash would also pool here, and as you can see from the way the light is falling on my figure, there isn't a big shadow here. So that's what I mean when I say that using washes will give you quick shading, but it might probably won't teach you very much about painting the way that light is falling on your miniature. So that when you, what that does is that doesn't set you up for success when you think I want to do non-metallic metal. I want to do, um, I want to make this crystal glow because that's where you have to start thinking, where is light falling? And if you've gone through up to that point, never having to think about that, then you have a lot bigger of a hurdle to get to that point. So yeah. Oh yeah. Lining for comic book style, I think is necessary, Omidar. Like... I, I think it really is a, a key. Like, you need those blocks, right? Of light and dark. Yeah, focused washes are, are good. But painting with washes. At that point, you're kind of layering. Um, the other thing that w washes doesn't help you with um, is, is brush control. Whereas lining, even if it's frustrating to you at first, will set you up for better brush control because it's making you attempt fine details. So... Yeah, that makes sense that the new store will will reopen when the new store is built. Because then you gotta you gotta start. Uh... Yeah, I noticed the gritty effect too, Ultra Squid. We'll see. We were talking more about like in twenty years in the future, like where will three D printing be, and and how will it change our hobby, right? Because you just can't for you can't tell. Yeah. Right. But technically, the crystal should also be lighting up part of her hair, unless it's a very faint crystal, right? But that's what I'm saying is just, this is this is all general. And again, your mileage always varies. Everybody's different. But if you're trying to set yourself up for success, learn to do a wash, but then learn to do lining. In fact, if you look at my Patreon, I have a free handout of techniques and the order that I recommend people learning them in. Again, you can switch that up. But you'll notice it's like, you know, it's, it's the base coat, it's the washes and then the lining. It's like it goes in a progression. You should learn both. Always never turn down the opportunity to add to your toolbox. If you want, you know, to be as versatile as you can be so that you can paint anything the way you want to, try everything. See what works for you. Because everybody's different. All right, what do I want? I want a shadow under these eyebrows. This is really a nice sculpt from Bobby, I gotta say. It was a great piece of concept art from Talon back in the day, and Verna did an excellent job with it, and this is a great re-sculpt. So all of it, all of it's good. Take a good class on it, Durham. There's, it's more than just like making some of the light go onto a surface. It's more than that. It's like how light acts. Um, like if a colored light is shining onto a colored surface or what if the surface is farther away? Um, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, so, but, but the point holds is like, I feel like in our hobby, sometimes because we start with that base coat wash dry brush, we don't teach light 
um, out the gate, like some European painters do, that it it really makes it harder for us down the road when we start wanting to do these techniques like dramatic lighting or OSL or NMM. And we aren't, we haven't been given the tools to start thinking that way. So it takes us longer to learn those techniques because we didn't start thinking about it earlier. And I used to really disagree about this. Like this is me changing my mind a lot over the years. Um, but I've come to realize that, you know, learning light earlier helps you uh, helps your painting style in general and and gives you fewer hurdles when you come to do those other specialized techniques. Yes, thank you, Quindy. There's David's OSL class. My my man taught an awesome OSL class and it is free online at ReaperCon right there on the Reaper YouTube. Follow that link that Quindy gave. And then if you want to, you can go to his blog, which is Light Miniatures, L-I-G-H-T miniatures.com. He has probably, I think it's the top rated OSL tutorial on Google, like number one. So yeah, thank you, John. But yeah, so David is, David's, my free card is color. David's free card is light. He understands light. That man can, that man really understands it um, and teaches it very well. So he's gotten me thinking more about it just because I'm always like staring at his figures. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, there's so many local restaurants in Denton. Um, I love uh, Barley and Board up on the square if they're still going. Crows and Bones. I'm not sure what's closed since COVID, but Barley and Board was um, possibly my favorite place to hang out and get a tasty food. Uh, it is a little bit more upscale. It's also a brew house. Um, they've got a lot of beers on tap. They have very they have very excellent food. The um, the bacon wrapped dates are a great appetizer, and their gnocchi. If you like gnocchi, which is the pasta potato dumplings, their gnocchi used to be to die for, and their ribs are good too. Yeah, I think we need to end. We're on to food now. So I didn't get to highlights. But that's going to buy me some time to think about what I want to do. We did get shading and lining in. So you can see that even that one level of, of shadow that the lining adds helps to bring out the, the uh, features on a dark skin tone, right? Because that's a challenge with darker skin tones. You have to still bring out the features. So because the lining, and this isn't even a very dark lining. This is black and brown instead of walnut. But this does help you. You can see her face. You can see the details. You can see her fingers. So that's the, that's the important part, right? The skin color will change a little bit, but we need to like remember to mix it up and uh, keep it close because if my highlights go up too much, I can always glaze with it to bring it back. So yeah, we'll have to figure out how we're going to highlight. That's fine. 10 minutes over run is fine because I started a bit late. I want to get my full hour and a half in. Not going to jip you guys on... Uh, on the instruction. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Tomorrow's Friday. I'm going to be streaming over on Painting Big this afternoon. Twitch.tv slash Painting Big. Um, around 4 p.m. Central Time. I think we'll d and um, But I'll be painting, too. I'll be working on Sandra's. So have a good day, all. And uh, we're going to Pixelogic. Awesome. Have some fun, everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow morning. And maybe later today. Bye.